Good afternoon everyone, welcome back to E304. Today we're going to finish up our discussion of uh, nanoelectronics by discussing the single electron transistor. Now before you listen to this lecture, please make sure you've listened to the video uh, that describes how a transistor works and that'll give you the background you need for this, uh, this discussion. All right. So assuming that you know how a transistor works from the previous video, let's talk about how that differs from a single uh, electron transistor, or SET. Okay, so you can see up here, let's look at the, the top picture. You can see that this is uh, basically uh, the same uh, structure as a regular field effect transistor, with a difference that instead of a channel between the source and drain, we have <coughs> a quantum dot here. Okay, uh, so what happens? Uh, at the gate, when the gate voltage is set to zero, so in its uh, standard sort of off state, uh, we have, of course, the Coulomb blockade that we talked about in the previous uh, lecture. Uh, so remember, uh, there's uh, two rules that prevent unwanted tunneling, and of course, in this situation, we want to prevent all unwanted tunneling because we want to control exactly when an electron is going to tunnel to this quantum dot and when it's going to go to the drain. So without any gate voltage, the Coulomb blockade um, keeps all these source electrons uh, from going anywhere, so they're just hanging out there. Well, if we apply uh, some voltage to the gate, we'll call this V Coulomb, and it turns out that this voltage um, it has to be enough to get us over the Coulomb blockade. So um, we know that energy is equal to charge uh, times the voltage needed. Well, in our case, um, we're going to let's solve for voltage. So let's see what voltage we need. So we need a voltage that's equal to, uh, instead of E, we're going to use E sub C, Okay, the energy of the Coulomb blockade, divided by uh, the charge on an electron. So instead of Q, we're going to use E, which is charge on an electron. So the voltage needed to, uh, to overcome the Coulomb blockade is equal to EC over the charge on an electron. Um, now from the previous lecture, we know that EC is equal to E squared over 2C dot. So the charge on an electron squared divided by 2 times C dot, the capacitance of the quantum dot, uh, over E. So that tells us that V, the voltage we need, has to be equal to E's divide, uh, just E, the charge on an electron, divided by 2 times the capacitance of the quantum dot. So this is the gate, the Coulomb, or VC, V Coulomb, or VG, if you will, the gate voltage. The voltage needed to overcome that Coulomb blockade. So if we apply this voltage to the gate, apply it here, then the potential energy uh, is lowered for this dot, and all of a sudden a uh, electron can tunnel into that quantum dot. Uh, so once the electron tunnels into the quantum dot, uh, then the potential energy of that dot is raised again, okay? Uh, and uh, what happens next is, let's go to the next page. So we have a, we have a dot, we have a quantum dot that's, an uh, electron that's in the quantum dot here. So now this potential energy is raised again because the electron is in the dot. And then that allows the, the electron to tunnel out of the dot, uh, overcoming this Coulomb blockade, uh, tunnel out of the dot into the drain. So now we have an electron in the drain. Okay, when that electron leaves a quantum dot, then this potential energy is again lowered, and it allows the next electron to uh, tunnel into the quantum dot, and so on and so forth. Uh, so as long as we have a vo gate voltage Vg that's equal to V Coulomb, we can have these electrons one at a time tunnel uh, into the quantum dot and through the quantum dot to the drain. Okay. Now let's look at what happens uh, to a uh, number of electrons that can pass through this transistor uh, based on how much gate voltage we apply. So here we have the gate voltage Vg. 
Now we know that we need to have some gate voltage that's equal to V coulomb, uh, which again we said was equal to V coulomb is going to be equal to the charge on an electron divided by 2 times C dot. Now we need this much voltage in order to get one electron to beat the Coulomb blockade and enter our um, our um, quantum dot. Now, if we add, if we want to have two electrons in the quantum dot, then we have to add another quanta of energy, another E over 2C quanta of energy in order to get a second electron in here. And if we want to have a third electron in the dot, then we need yet another quanta of energy. So if we um, apply, um, you know, three times V Coulomb, then we can get three electrons uh, up there into the um, in, into the quantum dot. Now, if we look at a plot of the current versus that gate voltage, we can see that every time we reach one of these quanta of, of voltage that allows another electron uh, to tunnel, we get a spike in current. And that spike in current is literally that electron uh, tunneling from the drain, from the source of the, into the quantum dot. Okay, uh, so that's essentially how a single electron transistor works. So the, the main difference again is that instead of a channel, uh, where we can turn it on and have current flow. We have a quantum dot and we control uh, how electrons tunnel in and out of the quantum dot, making sure that we don't have any random tunneling um, using the two rules that we learned in the previous lecture.